Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking today at a book from Law Society Publishing. It's in their Protocol series. It's this purple cover here. Conveyancing Protocol is what it's called. On the back you can see some fairly substantial detail. There are no names given specifically. It's covering it actually coming from the Law Society as a, an organisation. And what you've got at the beginning is the pre-exchange of, of uh, in, in this format of, of how one goes about dealing and acting with the various parties to any form of conveyance. It does start, start out in the first part with some detail about the protocol, but very quickly we move in to the main appendices, which in about 150 pages starts off with a guide to the protocol and then works us through the various areas. There is in fact also at the back um, some information. There's no index as such, but what you have got at the back are uh, very specific relevant bits concerning the various types of information you need to cover every aspect of conveyancing. Now, let me just go into this a little bit more um, detail. The title we've given this work is The Must Have Protocol for Conveyancing in England and Wales. <clears throat> and that is exactly what this book is. Once again, Law Society Publishing have issued a publication of immense help to all parties who are in any way involved in residential conveyancing, especially those solicitors' firms which are members of the Law Society Conveyancing Quality Scheme, which indeed all conveyancing solicitors are encouraged to join. This is the conveyancing protocol itself, this book here, and it's very much a, a professional book for, for the professionals. The intention of it is to set out the obligations of solicitors to their clients so that said clients can understand more about the process of conveyancing and the standards of service they have a right to expect. In other words, it's the agreement, if you like, between the person who wants the conveyancing done and the professional. One of the main objectives is to ensure that the client is, in the words of the editors, at the centre of the process and kept fully informed throughout, because conveyancing is it's a boring subject to many people. It's a very important subject though, at the same time, so we must get it right. We must have that concept of client care, I think, throughout. So the new protocol is something of a departure from those that have preceded it. It's designed to bring structure and clarity to communication in residential property transactions, and it focuses not only on the solicitor-to-solicitor -solicitor contact, but on the relationships with others involved, that is, estate agents, surveyors, mortgage brokers, and of course, most importantly, the buyers, the sellers and the lenders. It explains the steps that must be followed on the sometimes rocky path to the exchange of contracts and the completion of the, of the transaction itself, with a view to reducing delays, because as most people will know, delay is the biggest single problem in this area, and it does seem to take forever to get things done. So to this end, it, what the Law Society have done in this publication is present the stages of a typical residential sale and purchase. While not actually prescriptive, it does suggest how the work process involved can be organised and prioritised into agreed stages. That, of course, is the, basically the front of the, the book itself. The text of the protocol is, of course, included together with all the forms, guidance and formulae needed by the solicitors, and that's obviously in the appendices. The only oddity we came across is the appendix entitled The Law Society's Formulae for Exchanging Contracts by Telephone, Fax or Telex. Yes, before you can tell the younger generation of solicitors, so on, they've probably ne never seen a telex machine in their lives. So remember that such formulae may be included because property transactions obviously go back a long time in history, long before the advent, for instance, of email and so forth. Anyway, we can look forward to future formulae based on email, which does probably provide a, an indispensable record of correspondence for the future. Who knows? We're in early days with it. Let me conclude by saying that if your firm, or one you are dealing with, is accredited under the Convincing Quality Scheme, compliance with the protocol is mandatory, which means that the Convincing Protocol is one book which you should acquire 
for uh, from the Law Society now. The publication date is 2011 for this particular uh, title, and the we think that the Law Society Protocol is a must-have book for all conveyancing practitioners. So can I thank everybody involved in this? I think it's a very good step forward as we look to the future and the way that we deal with conveyancing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.